Welcome everybody. Today we'll talk about Goodhart's Law, what it is and why it matters. And for this, I'm welcoming Mike Amensen again. Hey Mike, how are you doing? All right, how are you doing over there? I'm doing well, thank you very much. Very good. What is Goodhart's Law? It's a law that was created by an economist and I, I, it comes in two forms. So I'll read the formal definition right now and then Mike, you can jump in and talk about the little more informal version of it. So the formal definition is any observed statistical regularity will tend to collapse once pressure is placed upon it for control purposes. Now here you can tell that there was a statistician basically talking a little bit. Yeah. So, so Mike, give us a, an easier to understand version, please. The one, the one that I know is when a measure becomes a target, it ceases to be a good measure. Right. Thanks. Yeah, that's the ver that's the version that I know as well. And I think it's interesting because it, it, it talks about this fact that, well, more and more today, right, we're measuring things and that's very helpful. Data driven things and are all around us and we have a lot of data to work with. But it also talks about the fact that measuring things changes things. And I think that is, for me, is the most fascinating aspect of it. So how does measuring change things or when does it change things? Yeah, I mean, the, uh, you're exactly right. That's, that's sort of the thing that, that comes to my mind as well. Measuring changes. You know, we, we know just from sort of popular physics, observing changes outcome, right? Just getting involved in any way. So measuring changes things as well. And we, when we think of observability and measuring in IT and APIs, you know, I, I think of setting up all sorts of, of metrics, you know, the number of uh, records added to the system, the number of customers who uh, have, you know, logged in, the number of uh, shopping carts checked out. We, we create these kind of measures. We even have all sorts of metrics, the pirate metrics, right? We have all of these, these things that sort of tell us what we ought to be paying attention to. But uh, we need to be really careful about what we're measuring because it skews not only, from my standpoint, it skews what we see, right? So suddenly I start paying attention to the metrics. I look at the dashboard every morning and I realize, oh, you know, this number is down. There aren't enough uh, people logging in yet or something like that. And that may not actually be what I should really be paying attention to, right? In other words, those metrics might kind of take over my vision or take over my view of what's really going on in the system. And that's not a good idea, right? Yes, I think that is, for me, that is the main message of this, saying that, yes, measuring is good and useful, but in, in probably almost all cases, the measurement is not what you really want to have. It's just some simple proxy for the kind of thing that maybe you're after and it's helpful to observe because it may give you some information how you're doing how things are on track or not but in the end it's always important to think about what is it that i'm really trying to do and i think that the fascinating part for me in goodhart's law also is then if you read about it like where it's being used mostly right it's not just about like one person doing the measurement and then like doing something wrong, but also I think it has a lot to do with communications. And I think we talked about some examples, right, where like these communications may go wrong. So do you have an example for us where Goodhart's law mixed with communications between people and teams, right, where this has um, unintended consequences? Um, yeah, so so there, there are a couple of possibilities. So. Uh, I'll give you I'll give you an example that I ran into. Um, there was an organization that was publishing a lot of APIs, and they wanted to increase the 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 value of the API documentation of the Open API documents themselves. And they said, "Look, you can't just publish uh, a, a file which has all the endpoints and details. You need to get some pros in here, some explanatory descriptions." So they they wrote a they wrote a rule in their in their pipeline, the check in pipeline, which basically said, "If you're missing a description," you're not gonna be able to check in. You're not gonna be able to check in your changes anymore. You're not gonna be able to build. So what happened was, what we're trying to do is we're trying to incentivize people for writing good documentation. And we're using the tools we have. Uh, what they figured out, however, because people are so creative, 
They figured out the minimum <laughs> amount of text that they could get into the description field of their of the open API document that would pass the uh, the build tool that would actually pass with green. So all of a sudden they noticed within a, within a week or two, all these APIs have the exact same description on them in the search tool. And it's because it's, it was like the minimum thing that they could get past because humans are so creative. They're so, they'll get their job done. And, and I think that's a, that's a pretty good example. I don't, I don't know if, if you've seen things like that, but that's one I've seen. I've definitely seen similar things happening. Um, one story I have also from the API space was this organization where it was basically just said, okay, APIs seem to be important, so we must have many APIs. And then there was this mandate of you have to produce APIs, basically. And teams like there was, there was a specific KPI affecting the rating of teams around you know how many apis have you published and of course what happened pretty quickly was that they were cranking out apis like there is no tomorrow <laughs> and um, of course what also happens is when you're doing that the quality of those apis tends to suffer yeah so they did end up with a lot of apis but they also ended up with a lot of really unusable apis and they quickly found out about that and then <laughs> this is where I got in but that, that was just interesting to see you know how quickly this thing kind of spirals out of control and I think it's not just because people are doing the wrong things so to speak I think it's also really what we talked about in the beginning it's just a lack of communications I think if you if you would communicate more specifically saying look we think API are important for this and this reason so our our goal is to help our organizations with APIs because we think they do this and that. And we think that it's better if we have more APIs, but mostly just because we think that they do good things, right? And I think if you communicate more clearly what, what your real goal is, where you might not have a perfect measurement, and then you give some indications of, okay, maybe more APIs are better than fewer APIs, but only if they're not really bad APIs. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's the communication part that sometimes just is missing, that like you, 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 get, you get this order, you know, coming down saying like, there should be more APIs and everybody just, you know, goes insane creating APIs. Yeah. Well, and I think you know, like, mostly it's a communication problem, right? Right. Yes. And I think, I think you're kind of hitting on something else, which, which um, I sort of alluded to but I don't think I'd thought through as much as once I'm hearing you talk about it. And that is my vision gets skewed. I, I start to think that the measure is a proxy, which I think is a good comment that you made. It really is just a stand in for something else, something that's a little harder to measure, like the quality of something or the usability of something and, or things like that. Like the description thing I was, I was thinking of, it really has a lot to do with findability and usability, right? That's really what we're trying to do is make it easier for people to find an API and easier for them to know how to use it. But by just saying you have to have a description of a certain length or something like that, that's just a proxy for that other quality, that other, that other feature. Yes. So often what you have to do is you, you sort of have to have multiple levels of metrics or measurements or observability. Sure, you need to have at least have a description. But now I need to also be measuring the other things that I think this description improves. Does it improve findability? How do I measure that? That's a little harder to measure. Setting up good metrics, good observational elements is really what some of this is about. So communicating that higher goal, I want better usability and searchability, uh, and then figuring out how to get some kind of measure for it uh, is, really, is really the challenge. And that, that means you have to kind of be aware of what's happening, what your real communication message is, and even t make sure you have to confirm that people really have that higher message in mind, right? You have to figure out, do they even understand this findability, uh, reusability uh, idea that I have, right? And I just had a fun idea, which is not super helpful, but amusing. <laughs> what, what you could say is, you know, you have to measure your measurements, so to speak, right? You have to think about, is that proxy still serving as a proxy or is it ah. being gamed or you know like used in a way that i didn't predict 
So now I'm switching that to something else because I realized that maybe even in the beginning it was useful, but now it right. ceased to be useful because whatever, right? Because of some reason. So, so I think you have to be, and then I think that's the important, like one of the important lessons at least, is that you always have to be aware of the fact that those measurements are just proxies and you have to keep an eye on are they still good proxies and you have to be very proactive and flexible in saying i'm just switching those out right They're, these are not the things that i really want to do these are just like indicators for the thing that really matters and if if it seems like they're not doing their job anymore they you know they get retired that's that's easy. actually that's actually a really oh that I really like that idea measure <laughs> measure the measurements observe the observations it just whatever it does it doesn't sound very helpful if you tell people no, you know you should really measure helpful. your measurements yeah, you're not measuring all the measurements are you <laughs> but that idea of being prepared to say you know this isn't actually achieving the goal that I was looking for or achieving it anymore or something yeah. like that like being willing to say well, it's time to move on. It's time for me to pick another. It's sort of like a horizon thing, right? It's like, oh, I've reached that particular sub goal or that 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 you know that thing. Now I need to set a new goal or I need to have other things to measure. I I really like that a lot. So that what happens is I don't become so personally attached to one particular observation or metric. What I become attached to are those higher goals, and that means I'm more than willing to change the metric to get closer to that. To that higher goal i like that a lot that's a cool idea and the other thing that i really like that i heard from a team uh, that that goes in the same direction now if you say i'm i'm willing to kind of retire my measurements if they don't seem to help me anymore like you can also actively try to extend their shelf life so to speak so one example mm. that i have is there was a team, um, there was an API platform team, and they were assessing other business units in terms of how well are they doing? You know, how do they need okay. help? Where do they need help? Mm -hmm. And the smart thing that they did, and I like that a lot, is they, they, they measured the other teams, but they didn't tell them how. So... So, so, so they were looking at some indicators, you know, and said, well, if you do this and that, then you seem to be a little bit further along the line. If you don't do this, then probably not. So they were kind of assessing how well these teams were doing, but they were not telling them exactly what they were looking at. They were just talking to them. And in the end, you know, they kind of came up with this assessment, which means that for those being assessed, it was really hard to gain the system by saying, right. oh, we just need to improve those three numbers and then we'll be the heroes because they did yeah. not know what those numbers were. And I really like that idea of saying, if you're really after assessing a team's quality, then maybe your mechanics, how you do that should be hidden. And then yeah. well, you can still change them, right? But they may right. actually remain useful for a longer time because people can't game them. <laughs> so yeah, I, so, I like that so that's, idea. That, yeah, that's an interesting idea. Um, I, I think you run up into the, in, into the space of, I don't know how you're measuring me. I don't know where these are coming from. You sort of, you know, you, you'll get a little pushback. So it needs to yes. be a psychologically safe place, right? I mean, where... You know, it's not like, you know, I get fired if you if I don't meet some measure that you didn't tell me about. Right now, that's not what we're talking about. We're really just talking about what you're saying with this idea of how can we improve or get towards that that goal? Try a little bit of this. It's almost sort of like what, you know, medical doctors might tell you, like, you know, you know, instead of giving you a pill, they say, you know, maybe you should exercise more or <laughs> eat less yeah. or drink, you know, something. Um, so so yeah so you don't have to be explicit all the time right it's kind of it's kind of what this is about but you're right that it probably it probably you could probably only do that if there is a certain element of trust between the parties yeah. you know where yeah. like the one being assessed trusts the the assessor that they yeah. will do a good job even if they don't disclose exactly what they're doing if that's not the case, then yes, totally what you're saying might happen that people say, you know, what you're doing is not transparent. You're just making random decisions. I don't accept what you're saying, right? That, that yeah, yeah. definitely can happen. So, so that's another, it's yeah. another form of communication, right? So I think you're really hitting on a thing yeah. repeatedly. This is a lot about 
communications, the, the measures, the metrics, the proxies, the, the, the overarching goals. It's really all about communicating well. I think that really is, for, for me, that's kind of the, the deep message of Goodhart's Law is really that measuring things and quant quantifying things is important. But what's really interesting is the relationship between that and your real goals. And there's that relationship is not perfect. And in particular, when you start using that number, when you talk to people or you set goals for people, right, then it becomes a really important part of your communication. And you have, you have to think about what's, what message you're sending, mm -hmm. how, that will, how that will cause people to adapt and whether that adaptation, right, is something that you're really looking for or very quickly, right? I mean, that is something, that, the one thing that I really think sometimes when people set these goals and you look at this goal and you basically, you say, you know, I can tell you what will happen and it's not what you want to happen, but it will happen. Right. <laughs> so so this is, this is, this is uh, reaching into the law of unintended consequences space, right? It's like what I happens so. is you have to be prepared you have to be observant, not of just those proxy elements that you've created, but the overall system in general to make sure that you're not actually having some unintended consequence that you're going to have that you're going to have to deal with a little bit later. Right. Yes, I think that that really is the, the ultimate message. Right. It's like you are changing the system and you have to think right. about what will happen. And if you're not thinking about that, I, I also think you're not doing your part of the job very well, right? right the others also right. may not be the ones, you know, that, that do their job perfectly, but you also have screwed up a little bit if you, if you don't understand the dynamics of how that works. I love it. Okay, thanks, Mike, um, for joining. I think we, we looked at a couple of perspectives of Goodhart's Law. It's still, I have to say, of all the laws that I'm quoting all the time yeah. in my job, yeah. Goodhart's is one that always it comes up all the time. It, it, it yep. shows up yep. in so many. And I think there's there's maybe there's a, a law of the laws. Uh, you know, once you know about a law, That's you true. start seeing it everywhere, right? Yeah, yeah. That that now that you're familiar with it, I see it in, in all sorts of places in my, yeah. my personal life and professional life. When I'm watching TV, I'm looking at uh, uh, governments and all sorts of things. I'm like, well. I know this is going to turn out. <laughs> yes. So Goodhart has definitely has definitely done that to me. It's like now that I, I learned about it quite a while ago, but I'm seeing it everywhere now. And, it, and it's very enlightening sometimes. Yep. So thanks a lot for joining. Um, I'm curious whether, you know, we'll find a different law that we can discuss. We'll figure that out later on. I, I think we should. Well, I think we will. There is, that is true. There is no shortage of laws. Okay. No shortage. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Join us for our next law episode, whatever that will be. Until then, have a great time and see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.